Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we will see the boot up process. But before that, how the SD card will be partitioned. So for an IMX233, we need three partitions. The first partition is dedicated for the U-boot, which is the smallest partition, and the type should be OnTrack DM6AUX3. And the ID number is 50. 0x53. The second partition is dedicated for the boot partition, and the type should be FAT32 and the content should be FAT. The third partition is dedicated for the root file system, and this is the largest partition, and the type should be Linux. And the content, it depends on the U-boot and your SOC. It can be either EXT3, EXT4, or FAT. At the end of the day, when you use FDisk, your, uh, your SD card should be look like this. Three partitions. The first SDB1, 2, and 3. The first one should be on track DM6. The second one, FAT32, and the third one should be Linux. So in the first partition, we have to burn the uboot file. Uh, in my case, the file name is u underline boot.sp. And we have to use dd command in order to burn these files into the correct partition. And we use dd input file and output file our uh, partition number one. The boot partition, we need three files there, device tree, U image file, and environment. And we have to use a copy command in order to copy all these files into the mounted partition. Same for the root partition, uh, we use CP command, and we have to copy and paste all the files in this step, we are going to see how the boot up process is look like. So we have three main components here. First is the SOC. The second one is the SD card and its partitions. And then we have an external memory. The SOC I see has internal ROM and internal memory or restaurant, but both of them have a small size. When you buy the SOC, the internal ROM is written by a manufacturer with a small program that initializes some basic peripheral of your SOC. After initializing the peripheral and selecting the booting peripheral, we will go to the first stage bootloader or FSBL. This program will uh, go to the partition one and read MLO. So the question is that why we need memory loader or MLO? So at the beginning, the SOC doesn't know about the external DDR RAM and it has only access to its internal memory, which is very small around, in my case, 32 kilobytes. So in order to execute any file, it has to copy it into its internal memory. But the U-boot file is pretty big and we have only 32 kilobytes. So there is a small files memory loader and it, it, it is small enough to be load inside the internal memory and initialize the external DDR memory and also load the U-boot. So, Currently, we are in the first stage bootloader or FSBL. The ROM bootloader read the first partition, uh, looking for the MLO and then execute it and then copy it into the internal memory. So at this step, the memory loader has enough information about the external DDR memory and at it's known how to initialize the external memory. So MLO read the U-boot file and then execute it and copy it into the external memory. So when we run the U-boot, we are actually 
going to the second stage bootloader or SSBL. So the U-boot will read the partition two and look for a UN file. So when the U-boot read the environment file, it will know the uh, UART baud rate and know which file should be loaded for the booting and which file should be loaded uh, for the device tree. And it also know the root file system is located at the partition tree, for example. You would, after reading the environment file, load the device tree and also load the U image file. So the U image file is the Linux kernel file. And then you boot path the control to the U image file. And then U image file will come up uh, and then make the device tree. And after that, read the rootfs file and then load it into its memory and your system will be up. So let's see how it is look like on the experiment. At the first step, we just burn the U-boot on the partition one and the rest would be free. After that, we added the boot partition and see how it's look like. After that, we add the root of this file to make sure the image is running correctly. So I open up my virtual machine. So this is our Pokey folder. Go to the build, go to the temp, deploy images, our machine. So first of all, we are going to uh, burn the U-boot file. So let's find the U-boot file, this file. I will add my SD card. Connect to the virtual machine. First, look at the disk software. So as you can see, the SD card is free. I bring it down. So we have to open up a new terminal. Use sudo fdisk uh dev sdb as for so in order to create a new partition you have to use n and then uh, print p for a primary uh, partition number one uh, you can use the default this is the first sector and the last sector so what is what is the best size for the u-boot partition the easiest way is to look at this U-boot file because basically we are going to burn this file. So anything that any size should be greater than uh, 284 KB. So I can just say plus 500 K. Okay. And uh, we have to change the partition type. As you can see right now, it is a uh, Linux type. I can use L. And here you have to find the correct ID number, 53 on track DM6AUX. And then I use T command. The hex code is 53. And then I can use P to see if it is um, correct. Yes. The first partition 500K and the correct type. Use the W command to write. You can see if it is written correctly. Yes, we have the first partition and the correct partition type. Then you have to use sudo dd command to burn the uboot file. Let me open up a new terminal. Open in terminal. sudo dd input file. So uboot. 
dot sp and the output file will be dev sdb1 and then we have to use bs 512 sick for hit the enter done there shouldn't be any change in here correct because we just uh burn everything into the partition one so partition one right now has the mlo file and also you would file but we cannot see that here in the newer socs uh, we don't need the partition one with this special partition type we can use boot partition and copy and paste you boot file and mlo file in the boot partition as and in in some of the soc we have boot code dot bin as the mlo it's depend on your soc but in our case we have to use a separate partition because it is a very old soc let's insert the sc card into the imx board and see what is happening so we need putty software go to the serial some tree and a speed would be 11 five two hundred so we can start with the imx board without the sc card so as soon as i power on the soc we will see this weird number i can press the reset button the same number first let's see where this number is coming from so did you remember we had a rom bootloader this ROM bootloader basically try to initialize the peripherals and then and then see which uh, peripheral has the booting capability and see nothing and then it will send this weird number for us for debugging and i have to search for imx rom error codes we will go to this website and this is the error codes i will search for the error code okay here mentioned that error ddi sd mmc device not supported so we can see that there is something wrong with our sd card or our booting process i can see this value have the same let's see for this one control f control v rom usb connect timeout so you see So it's basically look for the USB to see, uh, is there any bootable things on the USB port, but didn't find anything and uh, write this error for us. So let's insert the SD card. I will unplug that, insert the SD card. and then plug in okay so something is going on here so we can see that before the u-boot we don't have any uh, debug output so the ROM bootloader when is executed and try to initialize the peripherals and then load the mlo we don't have anything but as soon as we run the u-boot we have the terminal output so this is the u-boot versions we have a cpu free scale imx we have a, so it said that we just connected to the mmc sd card for the boot we have a 64 megabyte of ram so loading the environment it did it uh, doesn't see any environment file you in file 
So it just use some uh, default environment values. Look for the serial and see if we had any ethernet network IC, it, it will be detected in here because some of the SOC will be able to boot from the ethernet. So ethernet should be initialized at very first step. And after that, uh, MMC zero is our current device. Initialize the ether, initializing the USB, is scanning for the bus, but we don't have anything. So just, we have the U-boot. So U-boot has its own terminal as well. We can use help. There's a lots of, so you would provide a number of comments. So we can use them as a debug purposes. We can load the kernel manually. We can load uh, the partition manually using the U-boot, but just wanna show you how the U-boot is look like. So in the next step, I'm going to add the boot partition into the SD card. So power off the IM export. Then same as before, we have to create a new partition. So we have to use sudo fdisk dev sdb. Look at the partition, create a new partition, primary default, first sector default, size 10 meg. So currently the partition uh, type is Linux, but we have to use FAT32. We can use L, find the correct hex ID. Okay, this one, FAT32 LBA. So we can use hex C. Uh, C. So we use T command, partition two, the code hex is zero X, the hex code is C. Okay, and write it. If we go to the disk, we can see that this time the partition two, the partition type is uh, FAT32, but the content should be changed to the FAT. So we have to use sudo mkfs.fat dev sdb partition two, hit enter, and it's ready. I can go to the disk. Okay, the fat 32 is ready, content is fat. We can mount it, but as you can see, the name is uh, some weird number, we can actually uh, give it a new name using sudo fat label uh, dev sdb2 and then give it a good name, good. I can come to the disk, mount it, and it is mounted with a, with its new label. So what I'm gonna do is just copy and paste all the files into this mounting point. Using CP command, the first one is U image. The second one is let me look at the file names. So we need the device tree. Ionix dot 
BTV. And finally, we need the environment. Same as before, change the name, u-boot-fsl, and we have to change its name to e u e and v dot txt. We can go to our mounting point. All of them are here. We can unmount it. And I will insert the SD card to my IMX port. Let's see what will happen. To my host machine. And I need the putty and then power up the board. Okay. This time many things happened. So let's just start from the end. It said that unable to mount rootfs file on unknown block. So as you can see here, uh, the U image is running up and at the end it's looking for the rootfs file, but we didn't actually put the rootfs files here and it, it couldn't find the rootfs file. I will go up. booting from the MMC. So this time it found the Linux kernel image and its size. It basically put the Linux kernel file into the correct uh, address and try to load the U image file for us. And as you can see, device three is added to the DDR RAM. And after that, it is start the kernel. So if we, if we add a root partition to the SD card, so we will see that the whole system will boot up and working correctly, same as before. So I think that's enough for today. Thank you for watching.